What's going on everybody, C4 here. Welcome back to the channel and we're here for part two of our Madden 21 realistic rebuild of the Cleveland Browns. Year one went as good as expected. We made the playoffs. Baker Mayfield won the MVP. Odell Beckham Jr. didn't do anything annoying for us to immediately trade him away. And he seems to be in good spirits. So while we did have some less than stellar performances, especially in the playoffs there against the Baltimore Ravens, we are going forward here into the offseason with optimism at an all-time high that finally we are turning that corner for an organization and the Browns are you know, in that very, very quick transition stage from being the laughing stock, the joke of the league, into one of the premier franchises. So our roster's good. We're 84. Uh, on the offensive side, Baker Mayfield, after winning MVP, is now up to a superstar dev, 86 overall with the morale, which I assume we're going to lose that sooner than later. But there you go, man. Super Bowl week. QB of the year, MVP, superstar dev. We got Chubb and Kareem Hunt locked up. OBJ is happy for the time being. Jarvis Landry took David Njoku. We moved him from tight end at two wide receiver just to just to try something out. I mean, hey, if Austin goes down with an injury, we still have Njoku on the squad and we can we can endure. We can make up for it. Offensive line is one of the better O lines in the AFC. Defensively, you know, um, there are areas we want to get better. I definitely want to find a a edge rush partner here for Miles Garrett. We definitely want to find someone that can be the heart of this defense, because I'm very happy with Mac Wilson and Jacob Phillips as our young linebackers with dev traits, but inside we need some help. Safeties are young and have a whole lot of upside. Ronnie Harrison, Grant Delpit. Corners are young and have a whole lot of upside in Grady Williams and Denzel Ward coming off a four interception season. Also, if we're going to talk about Baker Mayfield being good, we might as well highlight that Miles Garrett also led the league in sacks, eight TFLs, 18 and a half sack. So we go into free agency and I open up things to you guys to you know, help me with the draft board. Uh, first thing is if Vontez Burfecht, a middle linebacker, just in case we can't draft one, it's good to have a strong veteran presence. Plus it's Vontez Burfecht gives us a chance that, you know, things could potentially get weird, but we have okay amount of money. And it was making that decision, understanding that we are going to have some players that need to get paid sooner than later. Do we save that money? and try to get our middle linebacker, get our edge rusher, either affordable options or through the draft, or looking at the edges that are available, do we dip in and bring in Shaq Baird, or at least try to? I feel like we should try to. Um, you know, on one hand, he's going to be expensive. He's 28. He's looking for a four-year deal. Wants to be his last contract that he has to get in his NFL career. Is, is his value going to really, you know, how bad is he going to regress? But I think the fact that Baltimore and Pittsburgh, two of our biggest rivals in the division, are trying to get on Shaq Barrett, knowing that we also need an edge rusher, uh, I, I think it makes sense here to try to try to at least come in with a competitive offer. So I'm thinking something like this, four years, 72, it takes us right in line. We are right into the mix. If we get them, it's fine. If we don't, it's, it's not the end of the world. We have more money to be able to re-sign players throughout the year two. And hopefully we can hit on the draft in, uh, you know, the area of an edge rusher. It doesn't have to be a D end. We can get an outside linebacker and convert him D end like we would do with Shaq Barrett. So those are the two players that we are going to be putting our initial bids on. A guy like Vontez Perfect that can help change the identity of this defense to be a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a hard unit. And then we got hard unit that's phrasing for sure. And then we got Shaq Barrett at a defensive end for us. Hopefully he wants to come. Going into the second week, we got Shaq Barrett. He wants to come to Cleveland. That is how I read that. The fact that we didn't overpay. We did not overpay. We just gave a competitive offer. And between the three AFC North teams, he wanted to come to Cleveland. So I'm on board with it. Let's go. Fifth year option on Baker Mayfield. I was honestly was going to be on the fence about picking it up, but the fact that now we have the reigning defending MVP, yeah, give me the extra year to kick that can down the road. Same goes for Denzel Ward. I mean, ultimately, this is one hell of a draft class, at least in this little Madden world that we have, because both Baker and Denzel Ward are playing like two of the top players at their positions. So yeah, fifth year option for Ward as well. See recap, look at its signings around the league, and that's awesome. Alpha Kamara going to the Ravens. Just need another running back to try to stop Mark Ingram and 
J.K. Dobbins. Richard Sherman is going to the New York Giants. Girdley is going to the football team. Marcus Williams to the Dolphins. Uh, Fournette to the Steelers. Okay, everyone's everyone's approving the run game. I see you. Other than that, I'm not really worried about anything. I, I still think best signing, pound for pound, best signing. Shaq, well, obviously Kamara going to Baltimore. Sounds kind of scary, but Shaq, hey, we got something too. All right, we got something too. So from the draft, we have, you know, we're 19. Here's our big board for at least players that are in consideration at pick 19. Uh, in terms of name value, maybe not maybe not the most well-known players. I think a lot of people do know if you follow college football, Patrick Certain Jr. Or the second. Uh, Dad was a really, really good corner in the NFL. But corner's not really that big of a need for us. Neither is D-tackle Tufele from USC. He's a beast. I really do think it comes down to three players here. We have Carmen. We didn't even scout him, but he's a highly regarded tackle out of Clemson. Should be solid. He could be the best lineman available, and then we slide him into right guard because right guard is our big need. Or we have Trey Smith, a guy whose medical was the big issue for him. Uh, he, had, he had some actually some pretty serious off the field issues, but on the field, he's very, very good. Don't get twisted. Tennessee might suck, but they have some really good players. It's really between him or Chaz Surratt, middle linebacker for North Carolina. There is a chance Surratt could be available in the swing of things in the second round. But I, I would argue middle linebacker generally it might be the biggest spot that we need to bring a player because we couldn't get Vontaze Perfect in free agency. So it, it's a tough call. They're both second rounders. Trey Smith, though, I guess it's because we did our scouting. Let's just let's just get the O-line all sorted out here. And we're going to select Trey Smith, 71, hidden dev. It's a uh, kind of getting shit on for this pick. 32 in true value, getting him at pick 19, 84 strength, 86 run block finesse. Jumps off the board. I mean, he's a solid player, a real, real solid player. So that's back-to-back -back hidden dev lineman pick for the Cleveland Browns. Jedrick Wills last year, Trey Smith this year. That pick 51, I just, let's keep it in state. There was a good D tackle here. Teron Vincent out of Ohio State, 69 at normal dev, almost a scheme fit. Just because, let's be honest, Sheldon Richardson is not getting any younger. So now we have a nice young D tackle that can grow and develop and be a starter for us a little bit later in the rebuild. Third round, we got literally the best FCS defensive player I think I've ever seen. And it's it's good, man. Hidden dev here on Jabril Cox. He was literally so good at, at North Dakota State. He's able to walk on at LSU and be a starter. And be maybe one of the biggest impact playmakers on that defense. Number 60 in true value, getting him at pick 72, so 12 points. Where are the value? Now, he's not an ideal scheme fit, but we're going to slide him into middle linebacker, which actually, unfortunately, will probably tank his rating just a little bit. But I think with the upside, with the dev trait, we're getting two hidden devs, which I'm happy with, very, very happy with. Now it's time to build corner depth. We have another third rounder uh, between Chase Lucas, who got a mid-round grade, Thomas Graham, late third yeah, we got to continue to build our secondary up here. We only have three corners on the roster. So we'll grab Chase Lucas out of Arizona State, 67 normal, 76 in true value, getting him at pick 83. Oh, kicking around in the fourth round. We have two fourth round picks. Graham is still there out of Oregon. So yes, sir, we'll bring him in again. Number 90 in true value, 103, 67 normal. A little bit better of an athlete than Lucas. Maybe not as technically sound. There's a look at the bigger picture, our full draft recap. So, yes, in the first round, we got Trey Smith, Hidden Dev, 71 guard. Second round, we got Teron Vincent, 69 D tackle. Third round, let's just make the move right now to middle linebacker. See how big of a hit. He could go as low as like 64. I've seen, I've seen some pretty harsh regressions, but I, he's a good cover guy. So, I, I don't think it's going to be too hard. 64. So, the value kind of sucks. But it's only going to take him less than 2,000 XP to get a skill point. And we got the hidden dev that we're working with. But he might not be a starter. Uh, we, we went all in on the second year here. We got Chase Lucas, 67 normal. Graham, 67 normal. Uh, Navon Donaldson, another interior lineman that we can bring in from the U. We got TJ Carter, 66 normal corner. Baron Browning staying within Ohio State. Like trying to get the local guys here. Uh, good depth middle linebacker. He's actually a higher overall than Jabril Cox. Jesus, that's not... That's less than ideal. And then we got the punter tight end hybrid from Central Missouri, Zach Davidson, to come in and be our third tight end. Overall, that's a real good haul. No one below a 60 overall. We got two dev traits from all these picks. Let's just hope we can kind of salvage Jabil Cox and moving him in to a middle linebacker.
So we are now here, week one of the 2021 season. I'll tell you, we will play this game. I want to get the season started out on a hot note, and I feel like the Jets are a game that we could definitely come in and flex our muscles against. So, before we even do that, though, we have a breakout player, which I love seeing, Greedy Williams. Player that I absolutely want to get off that normal dev, because I do think he's, he's really good. I just got 4,000 XP for him, but I didn't get a dev trade. Oh, all right. Uh, well, yeah, uh, we're we're looking good. We're uh, you'll take that little bit of boost energy. Hopefully, we'll kickstart his season for Greedy Williams to take his game to another level. But everything right now seems to be a good spot. Nothing too volatile. Odell seems happy. Baker seems good, and uh, that's pretty much all you can ask for. We're gonna go with Trey Smith starting at right guard. That's really the only change on the offense, and I will be gambling that we can take Jabril Cox. While the overall might not be as good, the dev trade is way better, and he can become the staple and centerpiece of this defense. So let's go work the Jets. We're the worst team in the game. Let's get four or five touchdowns for Baker Mayfield, and let's keep things high. Keep morale high, and make this the year the Cleveland Browns are to be taken seriously. Come on, Barrett and Garrett. Let's go. It sounds like a, a terrible... Oh! There we go. It's a pick. Baron and Garrett sounds like a terrible comedy duo from the 90s. But it, the pressure works. Ryan Harrison's able to get a pick. Tremendous starting field position for the Browns offense. Go, Baker. Third and goal. I'm forcing the run. I am... Like, when I can, I'm not... Like, when I throw the ball here, there's literally an 80% chance I'm going to throw a pick. Honey, uh, just kick it. I didn't think he, I thought he dropped it. I thought he dropped it. Forty yards, Austin Hooper. You know, does Zach Ertz feel that? I, I think the third best tight end in the NFL might be Austin Hooper now. Mine. Pick that off. Yes, Carl Joseph. Ooh. My offense sucks, but my defense is pretty good. Oh, Here we go. See some ghosts. Ooh, hear that, Sam Darnold? It's only the beginning. 68-yard pick six, Kyle Joseph. Oh, that's too easy. Too easy. Oh, that's too good. That's too good from Odell. Now you've been doing a lot of run blocking today and your first target was a drop, but put that smile on your face. Kareem, don't be something stupid like a hold. Offensive pass, you know, what are we gonna get? Ooh, is that rough in the passer? Counts. It counts, tack it on the kickoff, please. Come on, you can't. Going on with these corners, man. See this one out. Can't you can't you can't make the playoffs, MVP, all this stuff, and then start your season losing to the friggin' Jets. Kareem Hunt, the chunty backfield continues its dominance. Let's go. Oh, get off me, Nicholas Chubb. Who needs wide receivers? Who needs an MVP quarterback when you have this good of a run game? Week one victory is a week one victory. The passing game might not have been in sync, but we still dropped 37 points and got a victory where the defense and offense both look solid. Uh, maybe not so much the way that Baker Mayfield, the defending league MVP, wanted to finish things, but the running attack was outstanding. 137 yards and a touchdown for Chubb, 59 and a touchdown for Kareem Hunt. Chunty backfield, and Chunt got two. So they got, you know, all three touchdowns. We're out of this backfield. Odell... Not a quiet day, even though he had a couple bad drops, a couple bad routes. Still three catches, 79 yards. On the defensive side, Mac Wilson led the team eight tackles. We had a sack for Shaq Barrett, the newcomer, the big money free agency signing. Ogan Joby got one. We have a pick from Ronnie Harrison, a 70-yard pick six. Carl Joseph, we can get the passing attack back in rhythm, back to where they were last season. Look out for this Cleveland Browns team. All right, so we have actually a pretty brutal start to the schedule. We have a four-game road stretch here 
Let's start things off against the Cincinnati Bengals. And with that game, it's... Oof, it's actually... That's, a, that's not a great result whatsoever. 28-10. Another loss against Pittsburgh. Close. I mean, we're on a little bit of a slide, but hey, Chiefs are one... Oh, Jesus Christ. Chiefs were one and two, but they were able to break their disappointing start. All right, let's just get this last home game. Oh, who's the hurt? Who's hurt? Okay, depth injury. Only depth injuries, nothing too bad. Let's let's just get out of this road trip against the 4-0. Do oh, the Detroit Lions are 4-0. And somehow Odell. I could, oh, of course he gets a depth trade. All right. Week six, can we break the streak against the three and two Chargers? And it's mm, still not good. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me, Mister. I like to get shit on. I did not call the right plays. The boiling over point has come. You don't need me to put in any of these, you know, NBC, Skip Bayless type takes so my video gets flagged and I don't make any money. You know, Odell has been forever. Seems like since he's got traded from the Giants to the Browns, it's been on thin ice. And you thought maybe last year with the chemistry between him and Baker Mayfield, maybe it would be enough to make him happy. I, I don't know what to do. And then you give him a chance to go up to an X-Factor. It wasn't even like we weren't feeding the ball. It wasn't like he came to me as a disgruntled player. And, and because everyone's pissed off right now. We are not where we want to be. We're on like, what, a four-game losing streak. It was a chance for him to go up dev trait. He didn't hit it and then blames us. So, you know, it, now or never, man. We're a running team anyways. We got Chubb. We got the O-line. We got Kareem Hunt. We got the Chunt backfield. And, and, and the fact that, you know... It's we're in a losing streak right now. Morale's not high, and then you have someone like this that's just a, you're gonna make it that much more difficult. And, and unfortunately, because of his cap hit, it really limited the two teams we could trade him to. It's between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Washington Football Team. Uh, I'm gonna start the bidding here to second rounder. If we can get a second rounder for Odell, hey, I mean he's probably not worth the first rounder anymore. That ship has come and gone, man. He's his reputation has succeeded himself, and, and no one with the on-field talent, really wants to deal with it. So let's just set him off to Jacksonville, a team that has no idea what their franchise identity is going to be because they're constantly floating back between, hey, we want good players to come here, and then we're also going to be trading away our good players like, you know, Jalen Ramsey and stuff like that. So I'm sure Odell is a match made in heaven for the Jacksonville Jaguars, but it, it, it's just time to... It's time to cut ties. Like, there was a breaking point. It was just like, it was some good. You'd have a big game, have a huge game, have a couple bad games, start being a little frustrated. I think there was a, uh, an incident last year where he came to us as a frustrated player, even though things were great. We could not be airing the ball out more. And then just with everything gone this season, it's time to recoup our losses, go forward, and see if we can get the most out of our MVP quarterback, Baker Mayfield, with the supporting cast around him now with Austin Hooper, who I think is probably the third best tight end in the NFL. Jarvis Landry is one of the best slot wide receivers in the NFL. His role is going to step up. But, you know, you got to get that balance, man. Get that balance back in the locker room, back to where it needs to be. And to do so, Odell, best of luck in Duval, man. So our wide receiver room is going to look a little bit different. Jarvis Landry is wide receiver one. We have Njoku now. Uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones, very good athlete out of Michigan in his second year. Uh, John Vea Johnson, I mean, I guess we could see who's sitting on the old free agency pile. If there's anyone that we can we can use here that could help our squad. Probably not at this point. We got Noel Brown, Hakeem Butler. Um, hmm. I actually kind of like the sounds of Hakeem Butler. I was a big fan of him in college. Yeah, let's do that. Let's poach him off. The old practice squad here of the Chicago Bears. Throw him into the mix. At least we got someone coming to us like a man. We got Chubb. He's not happy. He wants to contribute however he can. Absolutely. We're getting you involved. Early and often. You, the chunt backfield, is going to go. What does he want? 12 touches. Easy. Easy. So, hey, look at that. 
what was it, three, four, five game losing streak, get Odell's ass out of the locker room, and we win. 36-24, Nick Chubb came to us, said he wasn't happy, wants a little bit more involvement in the offense, and boy, did he get it and make the most of getting it. 181 yards, two touchdowns, Kareem Hunt, 68 yards, touchdown for him. Our leading receiver, Jarvis Landry, nine catches, 182 yards. Joe could get the little touchdown there. So, so far, I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe at any time. I think for almost any team, having a guy like Odell would probably help you out. But I think we're going to be able to survive, and I think we're going to be better for it. We got three sacks for Miles Garrett, two for Shaq Barrett. So Barrett and Garrett open for business as the Cleveland Browns get a much-needed victory. Oh, and how fitting. First game without Odell, and Baker Mayfield goes up a dead point. Hmm. Hmm. Develop one more overall. Hmm. Maybe he's happy. Maybe he's more Al's high for him again. Get to sit down one-on-one -on -one with old Nick Chubb. Almost 200 yards. Yeah, he's in good mood. We need him to be in a good mood because we're going to feed him a lot more this season, as well as Kareem Hunt. So now that Odell's off the books, it, it does make sense to scout some wide receivers. Let's get an idea of what the draft class is looking like. We got some monsters out here. George Samuel, late first rounder, Wisconsin. Looks pretty nice. Mid first round here out of Florida State. Jason Akins. Let's just keep on keeping on. Wilkinson out of Florida. I mean, can we get something that's a, not a tight end? We already kind of have one of those in Ninjoku. Uh, Peralta here at AM and actually looks pretty good. Mid first rounder. Pretty much can't go wrong with any of the first round caliber play. Roy Gross, I mean, Clemson's pretty much wide receiver you. Uh, I'm going to scout the entire draft class at wide out. We might even have to grab two. But I'm saying out of this batch, understanding, you know, what we already have on roster, uh, I, I think Peralta might be the guy so far. A minus catching. You know, he's going to be fast, deep threat. I like the look of it. And that's two in a row for the Cleveland Browns. 38-35. Offense flexing its muscles here just a little bit. I mean, Stefanski against his former team. Yeah, you think he might have a couple, you know, aces up his sleeves here. But that's 300 yards, two touchdowns. Baker Mayfield, Buck 22 touchdowns for Chubb. One there for Hunt. Uh, 97 yards and a touchdown for Hunt. Jarvis Landry, not the great yards, but got a touchdown. And then defensively, Garrett gets a sack. Got a pick from Ronnie Harrison, 22 yards. Let's go, man. Cleveland getting some momentum. The wheels are rolling. Dude, come on. Come on. Come on. Really? And we got Baltimore before the bye. Yes! We found a way. We found a way. And Joku was not really the super happiest, but we made him happy. How? What? Have like 400 rushing yards or something. Uh, Baker Mayfield, hey, I mean, hey, he's an MVP. 300 yards, three touchdowns, no OBJ, no Jarvis Landry. Uh, ran the ball fairly well. Kareem Hunt still got a touchdown, and Nick Chubb had a great game. It must have been Hooper. Joku, I mean, it was a collective effort. They back up tight end. Okay. Using everyone. Denzel Ward had a pick. Two sacks. Miles Garrett. One sack. Shaq Barrett. Defensive guys are coming through, even though we gave up 31 points. And we got a lot of momentum going into the bye. Coming up for the bye on a three-game win streak. We kick things off against a 5-4 and four Raiders team. As we've been scouting through the wide receivers, uh, it's, been, it's been good news. A lot of good news outside of, uh, my God, these menus are so laggy. Uh, good news is the first round. We got Barry Mitchell, first rounder. We got a second rounder in the fourth here, Molden. Even though he's again, he's kind of in that mold of a of mold. He's in he's in the build of that uh, of that big, you know, pretty much a tight end. Uh, we got a six rounder that's a late second. That's some good speed here. So let's just keep on finishing out the draft. Hopefully, we can get another. Ooh, Deion Russell actually looks fairly solid early. Early third, that, that's probably going to be a high 70s. Might get a dev trade there. Deep threat with some speed. So, uh, as you can see, there is plenty of options and targets in the draft for us to improve the wide receiver position. Also would be nice with Hakeem Butler. Post him off the uh, Chicago Bears practice squad. Opportunity to go from normal to a star dev if he can get 100 yards on the day. Now, I'm not one for cheesing or anything like that, but... Given the state, given the injury, I think it's going to make sense 
to put all Hakeem Butler in the slot to give him the biggest chance at hitting that depth trait scenario. Come on, 35. Why? How are we scoring so many points? It, it didn't work. But we're, we're, we're still on fire. All right, now it's time to get to the con. How? Literally, it's day and night. Odell on the team, Odell not on the team. Is there something in the algorithm that's like, hey, when you get rid of Odell, your team's just got to play a lot better. But we have contracts here. We're waiting long enough. We have Nick Chubb first up. Absolutely. Pretty much we'll pay him whatever he wants. And uh, we'll get him re-signed. Sheldon Richardson. Uh, replaceable, for being honest. Ronnie Harrison, on the hand, I think he's still a nice young player that we can grow and develop as a long-term safety option. Um, and Joku wants a solid chunk of money. Hmm. Takes it. He's buying in, man. And we got one of the best punters. Get him something like a five-year, right? Best punter. Kill. Outside of that, that's it, man. We're going to have not a lot of money in free agency, but enough that we might be able to still make one big splash. Maybe not as big of a splash as Shaq Barrett, but something that could definitely improve the team if it presents itself. All right, I'm not believing this. Like, how are we scoring this much points every week? It's like 35 plus since we traded away our highest overall skill position player. And it's just guys making plays. DPJ. Out of Michigan, 76 yards, touchdown. Defensively, I mean, they're still just playing at a high level, man. We're getting, it doesn't make sense, but I'm, I'm not going to question it. And we have an injury decision to make ahead of this Bears matchup to throw in old Jay Landry. I think it's still time to continue with David and Joke. We don't want to rush Landry back because he's the guy. He is our go-to guy, and we've been just fine without him. And we win again. 24-21, and we went from last to first. I don't know if we're going to be able to maintain that. Let's see what happens against Baltimore. We got Jarvis Landry for sure now back in the lineup. It's almost like <laughs> the lower overall you are, you play better in the sim. We got Baltimore here. Okay, Denzel Ward, two interceptions as we cannot lose. And of course, we lose the game that we should win. First versus last in the North. And uh, and we slip up there. Now we got a very tough matchup against the 9-5 and five Packers. And we, we find a way to win that one. And can we make the playoffs? 9-6 and six Browns. 7-8 and eight Houston Texans. And the Cleveland Browns body them. 41 to nothing. The vital way to make the playoffs. And we're limping. Oh, no. Limping into the playoffs. Kareem Hunt and Larry Ogunjobi starting to tackle. And clearly, you know, he, he's listed as running back too. But he is maybe the second most dangerous player on our offense. Excluding the quarterback. Okay. So you can just see, man. After the bot. I, I almost view this essentially as getting rid of, after getting rid of OBJ, this team has been insane. But I want to see 41 nothing, Four touchdowns, Baker Mayfield. Almost 200 yards for Nick Chubb. Jarvis Landry's looking good. Defensively, Mac Wilson, a couple sacks. Garrett, sack and a half. Pick from Kyle Joseph. I like this team, man. I like we're starting to get our own identity. We're going to be that hard-nosed, tough football team. Not the glitz and glam of that Brown super team from two years ago. Now, I think because we played in the playoff run last year, let's sit back. The team's been so good in the sim. I think there's going to be a hands-free playoff run. It's year two. Still got you know a whole lot of time left in the bank if it doesn't happen, but I trust this team in the sim. They've been so good outside of that Pittsburgh loss post-OBJ. Let's go, man. And I also don't want the headache of having to play in the snow. Now, I might need to come in here. We have a chance to come in and make a play. But, hey, we're not letting them go away. The 10-point lead, we're scoring, we're being efficient. I trust Baker Mayfield, 35-31. Need old Barrett and Garrett to get a stop. Stop, Cam Newton. Oh, they couldn't. Oh, let's go! The Cleveland Browns, we know they're great in the sim, but just how great we are seeing today. Baker Mayfield 
ups and downs, man. It literally looks like I played it, to be honest with you. 375 yards, four touchdowns, three picks. Buck 40, two touchdowns for Chubb. Buck 55, two touchdowns, Jarvis Landry. Good performance there. Uh, from some of our death players, obviously no Kareem Hunt. That's a huge loss. Three sacks, Miles Garrett. Two for Gustin. Okay, filling in. Pick from Chase Lucas. And the Cleveland Browns. Someone might have been like clicking off because we traded Odell. It saved the season. All right, winnable game here. Winnable game. Cleveland, uh, Cleveland and who's their quarterback? Who would they have? I mean, I assume Rivers probably retired. Either way, the Colts. You know, they, 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 they like to control the trenches. They like to be able to run the ball. Big Q, everything like that. I mean, if I had to say one guy that I want in this league that could come to my team, it would be Quentin Nelson. I think he fits what we're trying to build here in Cleveland. But what you can see what we're doing in Cleveland is we're not letting them breathe. We are suffocating the Colts 17 to nothing. This is going to be the year. This might be the shortest rebuild. We took us three years to win a Super Bowl with Detroit. Might only take us two with Cleveland. And all it took, the catalyst, would be moving on from Odell. But we got to finish it off, and we did. Professional victory there. That's what happens when you can run the ball. 100 yards on the ground for Nick Chubb. 258 for Baker Mayfield as the Browns in year two are heading to the AFC Championship game, beating the Colts 24-17. Player of the week performance against the Colts. Four sacks, four miles. Garrett by Gardner Minshew. Four touchdowns and how fitting. Like this. What are the odds? What are the odds? The 12-4 and four Jags with you-know-who at the top there. Versus the Browns, Super Bowl on the line. There's no way. There's no way we lose this one, right? There's absolutely no way. Jacksonville starts out hot. Their offense is is a well-oiled machine, I guess. Even though they're, they're tanking a year ago. But the addition of Odell, it's, it's a new life. Jacksonville Jaguars. They're getting the most out of that second round pick they gave up to get Odell. But we're just manhandling them right now with the Cleveland Browns. 24-14, 10-point lead. Extend there with a little bit of a field goal. A little bit of a pulse here for Jacksonville. But one thing I've noticed about this Cleveland Browns team is that when we can kill off a game, we're able to. And 30-28, to even though Minshew had a pretty strong game. Baker Mayfield did enough. Odell shut him down, man. I mean, maybe not shut him down. He didn't take the game over, though. I, I, I like Denzel Ward. I like Denzel Ward against OBJ in that matchup. But look at that. Jarvis Landry, the guy that we committed to being our wide receiver one. Much better performance. Seven catches, 118 yards. Two touchdowns defensively. Two sacks from Shaq Barrett. One sack from Miles Garrett. And in year two, the Cleveland Browns are heading to the Super Bowl. And the Super Bowl yearly, I don't care about the awards yet. We're still not over. Our season is not over. It is going to be the 10-6 Browns, 86 overall. The 10-6 49ers, 88 overall. Looking at the Niners here, nothing that's new. It's the exact team we know. Uh, Jimmy G up to a superstar depth, so he had a great season. Quan Alexander up to an X-Factor. Eric Armstead up to an X-Factor. It's going to be a tough one. We're going we're gonna to pop a bear. I, I don't feel like... I feel like when you make the Super Bowl, I don't necessarily just want the, the Sim to completely one-sided. But then again, I haven't even had an opportunity to come in because our team's been so good and I don't want to disrupt what we've been able to build and develop here in Cleveland. Let's get into the Super Bowl. Then Dallas. Okay. I have no idea how this one's going to go, if I'm being honest with you. I feel like... Two teams, stylistically, kind of the same. Both these teams want to run the ball, but push comes to shove. If it has to come down to the arm talent of the quarterback, give me the reigning MVP in Baker Mayfield. For the first half, it's, it's both these teams still trying to feel each other out. Able to kick a field goal. 13-13, everything to play for in the second half. We're settling for a little too much in the field goal department. 49ers get the go-ahead touchdown. Fourth quarter. We get a little score there. I love that. 10-point lead. Coming on third down. Third and two with old Chubb. Then first down, game's over. We get the Super Bowl. We're done. We're done rebuilding the Browns. Come on. Okay. You know what? You know what I'm good at though? You know what I'm good at though? Can I can I play this? Get a gong. 
Let's get a gong. That's what we need. I, re I paid big money for this punter. Let's get a gong. And that's not quite a gong. It's good enough. That'll do, pig. I'm going to play this defense, too. I'm playing this defense. I'm shutting them out. He's not, we're not letting a, the, a not good quarterback. Oh, you've got to pick that off. They are fringe field goal range here. Get the sack. Oh my God. We're, he's got, just get him. What's that? He was out of illegal touching? I swear to God, I am not sabotaging anything. Illegal forward pass because he's not a good quarterback. Is the clock running? You can't game can't end on a penalty. How's there already a flag up there? This is for the Super Bowl. Send it with the sack. There we go. We're the champs. It took me two years. It took me two years. It took me just chemo on the locker room cancer. And we're champions. Two rebuilds in the books, two Super Bowl titles. Didn't take me the full five in either. Defensively, outstanding. I don't really want it to end, it, it, but it just makes sense. Like I, I, I have no desire at this point in Madden 21 to like try to win multiple Super Bowls with the team. Once you win a Super Bowl, I did my job. I took a Browns team that we saw week one in real life. Be the exact same Browns that they were last year, what they were two years ago, the laughing stock of the league. We took that team. We got Baker Mayfield playing like an MVP quarterback. Credit to Stefanski. Great head coach hire. Then year two. Things were terrible. We lost four in a row. We were one and four. Traded Odell and then went on one hell of a run. And then ended up here with a Super Bowl victory, man. Who's our MVP? Who played well this game? No, you didn't play well. A lot of guys on the defense. Very questionable decisions on that final drive. Baker Mayfield, you know it was an ugly game. Went a buck 83, a touchdown and a pick. And 56% completion percentage gets you the MVP. But it's good enough, man. MVP of the league, MVP of the Super Bowl. And in Dallas, the confetti is orange and brown. Because the Cleveland Browns are no longer Ramin. Nick Chubb, Baker Mayfield, Jarvis Landry. I think for some reason, Jabril Cox, the rookie linebacker, is up there. But I ain't mad at it. Those are your studs. And that is a successful rebuild in the books, baby. So it's just let me know what team's next. I'm 2-0. I'm 2-0. We've made big moves. We've made moves that are risky that have paid off. Shaq Barrett in free agency paid a lot of money. We're kind of hindering our team salary cap wise. It paid off. Odell trade. It paid off. And look at this, man. I'm telling you. If uh, Baker Mayfield's getting the MVP for that performance... Probably should have been Nick Chubb. 100 yards, two touchdowns. Once again, running backs are getting absolutely shafted by quarterbacks. Could have been Miles Garrett. Three sacks on the game. TFL as well. Carl Joseph had a pick. Greedy Williams had a pick. But either way, the 49ers were sloppy. The Browns were braver. And the Browns are Super Bowl champions. So that is how we're going to finish this. I'm not saying it's the end forever. Much like the Detroit Lions rebuild that only took us three years, I'm not deleting those saves. We could at some point come back and revisit, but the point of a rebuild is winning a Super Bowl, and we have been able to accomplish that in two years with the Browns. Now, while the Browns in real life are very much not what they are in Madden. In Madden, uh, it's, it's, I would say, 25% of the time, which is a lot. The Browns will be one of the best teams in the sim, and we saw that here today. But... It still doesn't make this any less rewarding, any less sense of accomplishment for what we were able to build. 86 overall team. We made Baker Mayfield in it to an MVP. Nick Chubb was a beast. We were able to win the Super Bowl though. Kareem Hunt, uh, Jarvis Landry, wide receiver one, took the reins. Uh, being able to draft Trey Smith, developing very, very nicely. Already up to an 81. O-line is in point. Austin Hooper was outstanding defensively. Garrett and Barrett and company was out... You know, unreal. Simply unreal as an edge rushing tandem. Uh, Mac Wilson went up dev trade here as well from star to superstar. So he's thriving in the linebacking core. And the secondary, uh, Carl Joseph moving him from safety to corner. Panned out. It worked well. I think the same could be said taking David Njoku and making him a tight end to be our wide receiver too. It panned out. 
We got a brand new sense of identity, power football, old school style football, and we were rewarded with a Super Bowl title. Uh, I guess we could kind of look at the stats here. So we didn't look at it at all. Uh, Baker Mayfield, 4,300 yards, 32 touchdowns, 15 picks. He was 5th in yards, 11th in touchdowns, so generally pl- still playing like a top 10 quarterback. Maybe not the level that he was as an MVP, and it's probably cause and effect. I don't think it's random that we get rid of Odell, and he's not as prolific as a passer. Running the ball was outstanding, 1,300 yards, 16 touchdowns, Nick Chubb, 8 tutties there for Kareem Hunt. On the receiving front, we got no 1,000 yards to collect it was a collective. We didn't need the one superstar. 800 yards, eight touchdowns for Jarvis Landry. He missed some time with an injury. Four or five weeks. He was giving us a, a full season there. I mean, just do the math. 67 yards a game times that by 16 games. Yeah, he's a 1,000-yard type player. Austin Hooper was solid. and Njoku was solid. Uh, Kareem Hunt, dangerous as ever. 12 total touchdowns on the year. Just so much production out of our two running backs. Uh, Baron Browning actually led the team in tackles. The uh, late round pick out of Ohio State. 13 sacks, Miles Garrett. 11 from Shaq Barrett. Almost 30 TFLs between the two. Like, that was absolutely the right decision to go after Shaq Barrett at the beginning of this video in free agency. Uh, interceptions, five picks, Denzel Ward. Maybe the first time in a rebuild in Madden 21 that my corner one has produced and played like a corner one. Uh, kicker was on point, channeling his inner Matt Prater. Just, I'm very happy, man. Very, very happy and satisfied with how this rebuild went. Cam Newton was your MVP. Not really worried about it. It is what it is. We got the we got the award that matters. Baron Browning. Uh, when we get him the fifth round, uh, defensive rookie of the year. Cool. I'm not going to complain about that. Nick Chubb was the running back of the year. How are these menus so not optimized? Like literally, just be better, man. And Denzel Ward was the DB of the year. So. Hey, there we go. Another one in the books. Again, I mean, I'm not against these going a full five years and having that ups and downs, but I'm not going to not take a Super Bowl when it comes with me. So 2-0 for our Madden 21 Realistic Beat Rebuilds. Let me know in the comments what team you want to see me rebuild next, and I'll do it, and I'll win them a Super Bowl. I guarantee I'll win a Super Bowl, because right now I have yet to not win a Super Bowl in the Realistic Rebuild. So I hope you guys are enjoying the series. Uh, I know, like, views-wise, I mean, I'm not getting 70, 80,000 views like I, did, I was on some of my other rebuilds, but I'm actually feeling good about the content that I'm making. So that, that's that's the biggest and most important thing to me right now. So I hope you guys are enjoying it as well. As always, if your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Working our way up to 150,000. We should be able to hit that, yeah, somewhat soonish. Uh, if you like the video, hit the, you know, hit the like button. The likes help me out on YouTube. And uh, I appreciate each and every one that's you know spent me spent some time of your day watching me play with the Browns. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, it's C4 saying peace.